salute your supremacy. We adore you. We give you all the praise, all the worship, all the adoration we can ever think of. You reign. Amen. Oh, amen. Oh, amen. Give the Lord a shout. Oh, 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 oh. Give the Lord a shout. I want you to do something for me. Move to about, let's say, 15 people and give them a high five. Give them a warmly welcome. Move to about 15 people. Move, move. Move to, move to somebody and give them a welcome. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. 
again. Then the last one, we give the Lord a thunderous shout. Hey, I say, who was the final day? Jehovah, the final day. Last one, I want you to shout on this one. Shout, Jesus! Hey, are you ready? Give the Lord a dance. Give the Lord a dance. Give the Lord a dance. Who was the final say? Go! Jehovah, the final day. Somebody scream! Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen. Thank you. so much for being here. God bless you so much for being here. You are all welcome to the finest, to the best, the reigning, the ever reigning, the best boys school and the best senior high school. That's Ghana can ever boast of. Blue! Let them hear you. Blue! Blue! Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Presec Legon. Thank you. There are many Presecs. There is Presec Osu. There is Presec Kema. There, there are plenty Presecs. But there is only one Presec. There is only one Presec Legon. There is only one Presec Legon. There is only one Presec. God bless you so much for being here. Can we show some love and appreciation to our sisters from Accra Girls? I show them some appreciation. God bless you so much for being here. Thank you all. We apologize greatly. Uh, I, be, I think your breakfast delayed a bit. Your breakfast delayed a bit. So we apologize greatly. But thank you for being here. God bless you so much for coming here. You are here at Campus Pop Up. This is the second edition. Amen. I told you on Thursday that at Campus Pop Up, what will pop up? How many of you are dining on Thursday? At campus pop-up, light will pop up. So you are here to experience light. In Presec, we believe that in Luminato, we the be most lumen. In the light, we shall see light. And in the glorious light of God today, we will see light. Amen. Thank you, thank you so much. So campus pop-up briefly is organized by Voice of Impact Prayer Ministry. And the mission is simple. We want to help as many young people as possible across the senior high schools, across junior high schools, across tertiary institutions. We want to birth God in as many people as we can. We want to take the move of God and the fire of God to as many people as we can. We want to birth potentials. We want to birth dreams. We want to birth visions for God. So as you can see, as a Come Alive campaign, we are going all over the country, all over the universities, senior high schools, and we want to raise people that are alive, people that have the light and the light of God in them. We have organized a lot of these programs. We've been to Legon a couple of times with Movers Conference. We've hosted an alumnus of Presec Legon, um, Mr. Bernard Avle. We hosted him. We've hosted the likes of Reverend Maoli Benson of Glowfet, we've hosted the Reverend Dr. Kojo Bempa also. And then just a few weeks ago, we were at Accra Girls to fellowship with our wonderful ladies. And today, we are here at Presbyterian Boys Senior High School to fellowship with you also for Campus Pop Up. And God bless you for being here. It's not going to be an ordinary session. Amen. It's not going to be ordinary at all. After here, you can trust that when the school anthem says to take our places in the future of our country and church, you can also take that place. Amen. So come along, okay? Come along and join us. Come and join us. So that we'll take our places in the future of our country. I'm an alumnus of Presec. My name is Samuel Eira Mabiti. I was here some few years ago. Why my house two boys? Why my crack our boys? Why my crack our boys? Thank you so much. Great minds think alike. 
Thank you so much for being here. Are there concert boys here? Let's do a quick roll call. Who are the house one boys? As usual, house one boys are quiet. House two, I'll come back to you. Who are the house three boys? Eggman house. Eggman house. Nice one. Who are the house four boys? Acro house. Acro house, you have to go and gather your people. Reese house, house five, Reese house. You are the only person from Reese house. <laughs> Laboni House, House 6. House 7. I was told by some gentlemen that House 7 is ringing now. And I told them for the way. When House 2 is there, what can House 7 be doing? Where are the primus in Taparis? The Oparians, where are they? House 8. House 9. House 10. The, the DV boys. House 10. Is there House 11 now? Wow. Why the House 11 boys? <laughs> now let's come to the proper house. The Clark House boys. Let, let them know you are from House 2. Let them know that you are from House 2. Don't let the house seven boys disappoint you. Thank you all so much for being here. Quickly, we want to have a brief session. There are a few people we want to engage on their journey through senior high school and where God has brought them now. Amen. Their stories will be a blessing to you. It was stories like this that changed us. I remember in the old assembly hall some years ago, the CEO of Karma came to us, he's an alumnus, he's an old boy. He came to us and he encouraged us. And it is encouragement like that, word of wisdom such as those ones that has brought us where we are now. So if you ever want to get to some of the places God is taking most of us and God will take you, then you must trust that the testimonies that you hear today will become seeds in your heart. And when these testimonies become seeds in your heart, then you know that definitely you are also surely going to get there. Amen. So brief, quickly, let's receive um, Daniel Asamoa Queen. We receive uh, Mr. Mawunyaga Laboy. We receive Godfred, Mr. Godfred. We receive Chrysler Erama Dumansua. We receive Marlene Jemfi. And we also receive Stephanie Yeboa. Please, let's do better for them as they come up. Where's the Rama? Thank you all so much. Thank you very much. All right. Please, can we get microphones for them? so much. So, we want them to introduce themselves. Already, I told you, my name is Ayram, and kindly, by the grace of God, I'm a pharmacist. They would all introduce themselves. They would share with you, some of them are old boys, and some of them were unfortunate. They were not men to have come to protect. If they had come in there, how many of you know protect at the time was a mixed school for a very brief period? The, the girls were pressuring us, we want to come some. We want to come some. So a very brief period, they allowed for a few ladies to come into protect. The, our ladies here were not fortunate to have been born then. They would have joined the protect fraternity. But thank God, they are here today. So today, let it rub on them. Yeah, at least they are here. They are so happy. They are telling me that 
they are happy they've come to Pisek, the glorious Pisek region. Uh, so they'll introduce themselves. Please let's start from the very extreme. Yeah. Daniel will start with us. So my name is Daniel Asamwa Betun, and um, I recently graduated from the University of Ghana, where I studied economics and French. Um, like you said, I was not fortunate to join you here at Pesek before, but I went to one of the good schools in Ghana, Ghana National College. And, um, Hello. I'm currently working at uh, Cedar Mountain Chapel, where graduation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Godfrey Nanaya Oyantun. Um, I, like, like you said, I also did not get the privilege of coming to Pesek. My big brother laughs at me every day. He's an old boy. Um, but it's all good. I went to Our Lady of Mercy Senior High School, a day school in um, Tema. And um, <laughs> and um, after that, I continued to University of Cape Coast, where I, comp I studied finance and completed. And currently, I am a financial analyst with Data Bank. Hi. So my name is Stephanie Yeboa graduate from the University of Ghana where I study economics and finance. I had my senior high school education at Adrisho Porsche Girls in the West <laughs> Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so I'm currently working in an investment banking firm in Ghana called Temple Investments where I'm a financial analyst. Good morning, everybody. My name is Maumega Lavwe, and um, instead of mentioning the school I attended, I want to give you a clue. You can look at the lines in my trouser. <laughs> what school did I attend? So I attended Presec and completed in the year 2012. Um, I was in house eight, <laughs> and. From there, I went to the University of Ghana in the same year to study economics, mathematics, and geography. At the moment, I work as an administrative officer with the Ghana Forestry Commission here in Accra. Thank you. Okay, I'm Marlene Jenfi, and I completed Kobo Girls Senior High School. <laughs> Um, I'm a graduate. I'm yet to graduate. I read BSc Physiotherapy. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The last lady has joined us, so we would ask her to introduce herself to us. Hi, everyone. My name is Priscilla Maduman Sunwa. I completed St. Rose's Senior High. <laughs> From there, I went to University of Ghana to study political science and linguistics. I am currently with the Ministry of Finance, specifically United Nations Systems and Foundations Unit. All right, thank you all so much. So my Pesek boy, please don't forget your trousers. Oh, I'm wearing jeans, like you see my life. You should be able to divide night and day, amen. Your trousers should divide night and day. Night and day. Great, so thank you all so much. You've heard their names and the schools they are affiliated with. You've heard them, our house eight boy. Fun fact about Kobo girls. When we were at Odumase, they used to be our girls. <laughs> 
and on our way coming to Sao, when we're coming closer to the sea, then there's some girls on the mountain were begging us that take us, take us, take us, take us, take us, take us. So we, we took the, so they are our, I, I didn't say it. <laughs> Robo is shining. They are our, this one. I didn't say that one. Yes. Thank you so much. So my boys and I would like to know, in your journey through senior high school, what inspired you and what drove you to make the decisions you made that led to the investors? Most of them are in Form 1, with a few of them in Form 2. Their seniors just left them, and very soon, there, there's a vacuum now, so most of them are happy. The Form 2s especially, I was in the house and they were sitting on the slabs. Form 2s can't do that, but they're now they are the bosses. They want to know what they can do with their future and what can they learn from you as they also proceed to make decisions towards their future. Probably we'll take four of you that would like to volunteer because of time. Uh, who would like to start? Let's start with my fair lady. Thank you. So, um, I don't know why you wanted to start with me. Okay. So, um, <laughs> mine is a bit of a twist. Mine is a bit of a twist. So, I initially wanted to go to Avery Girls, but yes, but GES found its way to have me at Archbishop Porter Girls in the Western Region. So, first off, I wasn't happy going to that school. Let me start with that. And secondly, I wanted to study science, okay? And so we went there, we took an exam, and unfortunately, I didn't make the cut. That was a surprise to me because, not to boast, but I saw myself as a good student, so I expected to make the cut, but I didn't. So I, had, I was given general arts, called general arts, yeah. So from the very beginning, I wasn't happy going to Archbishop Porter Girls in the first place. Secondly, I wasn't happy with the course. I didn't feel like, I belong there, I didn't feel like I belonged in the general arts course. So I was telling my dad that I'd probably leave to Ghana National or Infantiman Girls because those were closer to where I was, but I wasn't able to get into any of those schools. So I just stayed at Archbishop Porter Girls. But funny thing, in, um, in second year, most of the teachers realized that the students who were not able to make the cuts for the science for the science course, we're doing better in general arts. So we decided to ask those who were doing general arts if they wanted to come back to science. But at that point, I realized that I didn't really have the interest in science anymore. I didn't really have the passion for science anymore. I wanted to be a pediatrician. But at that point, I was like, to hell with being a pediatrician. I don't want to be a pediatrician anymore, okay? And I'm liking what I'm doing. My combination was economics, geography, CRS, and elective math. And I was enjoying it. I was doing well in elective math, in economics, and I was having fun where I was. All along, God was silently directing my path, and I didn't know. I wanted to do science, but he had better plans for me in general arts with the combination I did. So at that point, I realized that it wasn't about what seemed good to me at the time. It was about what God, what God saw as best for me, because I believe that sometimes God's plan may not look good to us as human beings as we are, but in the end, we realized that it was the best. I mean, he was the best for us, so he wouldn't give us anything that is not right. So fast forward, I completed my senior high school education with six A's. I don't know if I would, be, well, I would, I don't know if I would have been able to get six A's with the science course. And thank you. And I ended up getting an award from the school because I was the only student who graduated from the general arts class with six A's, so you can imagine. So I, all I'm trying to say is that all I'm trying to say is that it may not look good from the very beginning. I, I would cry myself to sleep. <laughs> it would not look good, but just trust the process. Trust that God is in the boats with you, right? And you're not going to sink. I mean, you're going to make it in the end. He has better plans for you than you could ever imagine. So I think that's just a little bit of how my senior high school education went. Thank you. Okay. Um my story is a little bit similar to hers. I entered the CHS as a science student. Um, my, like I said, my brother came to Presec. He had done science. He performed exceptionally. So 
I felt I should also follow suit. But um, a few weeks of doing science, I realized that mitochondria and et cetera didn't really make sense to me. Um, so uh, I prayed to God whether his path for me was science, which will eventually lead me to become a pharmacist or a petrochemical engineer, which I had wanted to do, or I should change to business. I prayed and prayed, but I mean, I was hoping I would hear a voice in my head saying, Godfrey, um, go to the business class or go to the general arts class, but I didn't hear anything. But then I kept praying and believed that God would direct my path. So I stood up one day and I moved to the business class and told them I have, I have come to do business. And the teacher was like, okay, welcome. Now, um, fast forward, I pursued business and completed as the best student of my class at Olam's. And um, beyond that, I have I went to business to do I went to the university to, the university to do business, and now I am a financial analyst in an investment bank. I've worked on transactions worth billions of Ghana City, and I give the glory to God. Through it all, He was with me, guiding my path. Right. So, as a as a young person, you need to you need to constantly pray to God to direct your path. You may have in your head where you want to go, what you want to be. But God has a bigger plan, which is more beautiful than whatever you could ever imagine. So let's keep praying. Let's keep putting all our plans and hopes in God, and he will direct our path. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. So at this point, I'm, I'm excited, not because I'm back in preset, but because on my left, um, our side chicks are here. I heard somebody mention that Kogo girls are side chicks. Somebody also says that they are exes. Whatever the case would be, let's take. And on my right is um, Portis because my wife also attended Portis. Yeah. So, and see, the the position is strategic. Side chick, wife. wife. You understand? The wife at the right hand. Yeah, the wife. But then, like every other person said, I want to read this scripture to your hearing. Maybe it will help you. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14 says, Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there's safety. In the multitude of counselors, there's safety. Now, there's nobody that sits here that would know what will happen in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years, in the next 50 years. You can't tell. But then, there's a saying that man proposes, but God disposes. So, we, we entrust our lives to God, trusting that God will lead us. Now, there again, like they said, when I was about to complete Pesek, my plan was to read law in the, in the university. Some way, somehow, my parents didn't agree. So, they said that do something business, do something, do something. And at this point, I want to suggest to you that many times, the voice of your parents is the voice of God. Please take it very serious. Don't ever try to fight what your parents would suggest you do. You know, there are times you have your own plans, you want to do something, your parents are telling you to do something else. And now I came to realize that whatever you desire to do, you can do it at any time of your life. You can do it at any time of your life. So now, I did what my parents asked me to do, and I find a bit of fulfillment in that. But there again, I've come to realize that whatever I want to do, I can still go ahead and do. Now, it's amazing that when they wanted me to go into business school from Pesek, it will amaze you that that particular year, the competition was so tight that even with my seven days, I didn't get business school. Yeah, I didn't. Seven days and B2 in what course? You can imagine. English, of course. It can't be any other thing. With that, I still didn't get into business school and then had to do economics and every other thing that came afterwards. But I can tell you that God has, like they all said, God has ordered our steps in such a way that he still finds you to go into what he has planned for you. So you see, the secret is that let's trust God that whatever point of life we get to, he's with us and he will direct us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, um, let me add a few uh, words to what our old boy said. In Presec, I, was, I think I was sharing with Kelly 
Uh, is Kelly around? Kelly House too. Hey, sly boy. So I was sharing with him how a lot of things have changed and things were not as they were when we were here. But then most importantly, what he should pay attention to and what I want all of you to pay attention to going on from now is God still directs your path. My greatest joy for coming to Presec was not just because of the blue magic, but then when I came to Presec, I understood God better in Presec. And I always thank God for that. That in Presec, I found God and understood God much better than I did before. And God always directs your path. If God wants you to take you to a place, he will make sure he will lead you there appropriately. And it, it will always and always augur well. In Presec, I wanted to read medicine. But in the year I completed, some way, somehow, I had a B2 in chemistry. So I was not able to enter the medical school. I had to go to KNUST to read law. Um, I read law for two weeks, and I stopped. <laughs> two weeks. I, I stopped after two weeks. I was in the library, and I was learning, and I realized that a course is not easy like that. So you should thank God for the lives of Daniel and the lives of Stephanie, who not only read a course, but went to university. A course is not easy. After demand and supply, I realized the mitochondria Godfrey was running from. <laughs> that is where my power is. I mean, so after two weeks, I had to leave. And it was all because of my father. Parents. So please, let's always listen. He told me, leave the law, go and do pharmacy. After the pharmacy, you can always do law at any time that you want to do. I could have said, oh, no, I like here. Because my friends were there. I, I like here. I want to stay here. Who knows what would have become of me. So as you progress, form one and form two, listen to your parents. Most of you are probably by now preparing for SATs. You want to write an SAT and leave the country. God be with you. But if your parents tell you, go to Legon, go to Ashesi, go to KNUST, go to UCC. When you finish, then you continue. Please listen to the voice of your parents. The voice of your parents can sometimes be the voice of God. We want to hear from them again. What inspired them in senior high school? Okay, so we've heard their stories, but I want to know, do they have some people they look up to or they looked up to in senior high school? People that you can also look up to that can change your story. So I'll ask Mahu, the old boy, if he had a place he was learning, because he had seven A's and a B2 in English. So we'll ask him, maybe he has a spot somewhere in the school, block F or block G, that his anointing is over there and you go and take it. So that he can also not get just seven days, but probably get eight days also. So we want to ask them what has been the inspiration in their senior high school. And even now, what is the inspiration? And they will bring the curtains closed on this session. So our friends that did not speak would like to hear from you this time around. And they will come back to the others also. All right, so for me, my biggest inspiration would have been my dad at the point. Um, I saw what he was doing, and I wanted to do the same. I really, really wanted to follow his footsteps just to make him proud as a son, because I'm the only boy, and then I have two sisters. But growing up, I discovered that there were other people that I can also look up to, like Bernard Avle, like Kofi Annan, Kwame Nkrumah, you read about all these people and you wonder where they got their inspiration from. And to some extent, these people that I played so much premium in, they drew everything from God to be whatever they want to be. So it then turned my mind from looking to them to looking to God to be my biggest inspiration. So the Holy Spirit helped me, He inspired me a lot to do more. And there is a funny way that God works out his things for you. Um, like I said, I wanted to come to Presec at some point, but I ended up in Ghana National College. And I thought it was the biggest mistake. But I realized that when I got there, most of the people there were also either Presec reject or Gehe reject. Or, so we were all rejectables <laughs> in Ghana National College. And so the competition was also high. And in there, I made some wonderful friends. I met some lovely teachers who till now I have communication with. And they keep inspiring me to do more. And one of the greatest things that they would, I picked is that when 
you learn to satisfy the needs of others. When you see a particular need around and you always want to try to solve it, indirectly you will unearth and you discover so many things about yourself. So as young people as you are um, per seconds, I know this is a hub of excellence. You are, God is going to put so much light in your spirit where you would want to be so many things. I just want to tell you that pray. The Holy Spirit can help you become all these things that you want to do. Because this is a very foundation that God would use you to get to the next level. So keep clinging to the Holy Spirit. He will help you. Um, they shared how their parents at some point also came in to tell them about certain things. The parent factor also, they, it plays a role. So put your parent, premium on your parents and not... Also, believe in yourself that you are able and capable by the grace of God to become all that you want to be. And God has a funny way of getting you to where he has destined you to be. You would get there. Thank you. Thank you. So they've all given us nice stories, how they got seven A's, six A's. So in GHS, when we're choosing our schools, People decided to go to Wesley Girls, Infancy Man, Infancy Pim. Then I heard a girl say St. Rose's. I didn't know the school. I didn't know where it was. But I said, okay, that's unique. I'll go there. Picking the school, my housemaster said, no, you can't go to this school because you won't get it. Nobody from this school goes to Rose's, so don't pick it. And my mother said, do you really want to go there? I said, yes. She said, okay, so say, my daughter wants to go there. I'll take her there. We chose the school. Then when the results came, my mom said, are you sure you're going to get this school? I said, yeah. Then now she said, oh, should I go and get protests for you? Should I lobby and get you Wesley girls? I said, no. Then the results came. Honestly, I didn't like French. And my French teacher didn't like me. <laughs> so this man used to beat me. He used to make me think I can't make it in life. <laughs> then, then finally the results came and the French, I had one. A language that I speak in my house, can you imagine, I had four. That was chi. So I had one for everything and then got four for chi. My mother was very disappointed, but she couldn't do anything about it. But I got St. Rose's Senior High. Before going to, before going to St. Rose's, I heard the song, I have no other God but you. So when my mother left me there, for us, is, you do not come with a suitcase, you do not come with anything, you go with juice bags. So I got there, my mother left the things, they gave me cutlass, they gave me hole, then they told me to go to my house. I got there and the seniors were some way, they were bit, some, some senior told me to go and look for something, I didn't know what it was, I was going around, I came back, they punished me. Then I said, God, I don't want to be here. I want to go back home. Then one Saturday, we were going for entertainment, and a senior met me. For my school, we call you by your batch names, and my batch were Irisels. So she called me, Irisel, come. I didn't want her to punish me, so I decided to walk away. Then she rushed to me, and she said, I'm talking to you. Then I said, senior, please, what have I done? Then she said, um, do you know God loves you? Then all of a sudden I started crying. Then she's like, God loves you. He will direct your path. Then she just went. Then throughout entertainment, I cried. My friends, the friends I made then asked me, what is it? I said nothing. But I went back to my room. Then I said, Jesus, do you really, really love me? God, do you really love me? then please help me because I don't know what I'm doing here. This is a school full of DB girls. And here's a girl coming from Kumasi. I don't know anything. 
But finally, I completed St. Rose's Senior High. I was telling my friends that SHS was a very critical stage in my life. If not for God, I don't know where I would have been. And one thing, my mother kept telling me that, be careful of your friends. You came to school alone, you go alone. So do not say, this is my friend, and so whatever she's doing, I'll do some. And I paid attention to that, and I realized after JHS, I couldn't keep in touch with my friends, except very few. And currently, I'm very much aware that I'm not in touch with any of them except one. And I'm glad I listened to my parents. And my mother always told me something that you have to plan. You, you can't go anywhere because everybody is going. Be intentional. Plan. So if it's prep time, you know that it is prep time. I have to go for preps. And not because a senior will come and say, why didn't I go? Be intentional about all you do. And trust me, God will direct your path. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we we'll take Mau and then we'll end this session. Hello. Okay, good. So um, let me also say this at this point that anywhere I go, I boast about the fact that I went through Pesek and Pesek actually went through me. It wasn't just, you know, um, my senior brother who I came directly after also attended Pesek. So we had that tradition of everybody will go to Pesek, you know, everything like that. And I believe my son will also go through Pesek one day. <laughs> But this is the point. The reason why I boast about going to Presec is not because of the academic excellence we got from Presec, but the fact that I got to know God. I found God in Presec before I left Presec. Now listen, in Presec, when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you go is morning assembly. Morning assembly is not to come and hear announcements in Presec. It is for fellowship. You pray, you are taught the word of God. Now, when you close from morning assembly in the evening, you are going to go for fellowship. I don't know how it's called now. What was it? Best case. Okay, good. So you know it. I, I, good. Now you pray before you sleep. And I remember those times that we used to hold Saturday dawn prayers. Is this still around? Good. Saturday. Aha. Uh -huh. You know how difficult it is to go for dawn prayers. And I remember the assistant chaplain at that time, Reverend, Reverend Don Pray, who was actually, I'll come to that, but would always ensure that every student is at Don Prayers on Saturday because there was a chain of things that were happening and he knew that it didn't take only the natural to deal with issues. We knew that there was a spiritual side to every issue we're dealing with in Presec. And so the spiritual side of life is what we got hold of in Presec before we are leaving. Now let me tell you, if you are leaving Presec and you don't know God, don't leave, come back. Don't go. If you are leaving Presec, and for your three years or four years, well, I did four years, and for three years or two years, you don't know anything about God, come back and know God before you leave. Because aside that, aside the excellence, that can, you see, being in Presec, your academic excellence is a bit of assured. That one, you can be sure of that. But please know God before you leave. Secondly, when I was in Presec, my mother gave me up to Reverend Don Pray. Who was, who was almost like my dad, my father. He was always checking up on me. So the point is this. Please submit yourselves to proper mentors, people who can mentor you in life. I can tell you for a fact that there were times I felt like giving up, and I'm sure you've all gone through that experience before. But Reverend... <laughs> I heard the from the back there. I'm very sure. We all go through that. But Reverend Dobre will always be on me that you, your mother gave you to me to take care of you. <laughs> So at every point, I knew that Reverend Dupre would be on me. So please submit yourself. Look, there are some of you, your parents might not even qualify to be those mentors. I'm saying this with all respect. Yes. But please look out to somebody, find somebody that is doing what you want to do in your future and submit to the person. Tell the person that, look, I want you to help me, guide me. Now the third thing I picked up from Presec that inspired me on my journey is the social networks we had in Presec. Look, you see yourself as 13 years, 14 years, 15 years. But I can tell you that many of my friends, what they are doing today and the big things they are doing today was because of the social networks they built while we were in Presec. Don't take it for granted. Please, I'm not saying be an, oppo an opportunist, but then invest properly in good friends. The people you are seeing today, you don't see what they'll become in 10 years. 
you will not see what they come five years from now. But I can tell you that these are the same people you see all along. Thank you very much. Thank you all so much. I'll add a few words to um, what Mao said. Reverend Don Pre, as he said, was also instrumental to my life. He would take us every Friday off campus. He had a fellowship off campus. He would take us there. He's the one that taught me how to pray for long. You will pray, Reverend Don Pre will lead prayers, and you will pray for long. He will make you pray. He will pray to about 4 a.m., and then he will bring us back fasting to... You bring us back to campus, and when you come to campus, he expects you to be at Don Prayer. Meanwhile, he just brought you from an all night. It was Reverend Don Prayer that forced the school to go on institutional fasting. There are fasting days in Presec. I don't know if you still do that, but then when, when Presec we used to fast, I think on Tuesdays, once every Tuesday in the term, the whole school will fast. We will, there, there will be no class. We will all be at the assembly hall. We will pray until it's about lunchtime. Then they'll start complaining. Then he will break us. And then we leave. It was over there that he told us something. He told us we should fear women. He was telling the form three boys. He always told the form three boys, my form three boys, fear women. Amen. So please, I'm telling my boys to please <laughs> fear God. <laughs> fear God, okay? Most importantly. But then you must make sure you find God in Presec. And then learn. Find God, learn, and get the very best networks you can get from here. God bless you all so much. These people and all the others you see here, want to speak? All right, Marlene. we'll give Marlene a few minutes. These people and all the other people you are seeing here are here for you. So after here, you have a few moments with them. Don't rush to the Aggies girls to go and take their numbers and their contacts to write them letters. Speak to those that will. Uh -huh. Most of you are here to come and you brought your books not to take notes. So you are coming to take. <laughs> Name so that you send letters. <laughs> you want to, but no, it's fine. It's all part. But most importantly, speak to people who can give you nuggets of wisdom to help your destiny. We will hear from our ladies from Krobo, our lady from Krobo, and then we'll close the session briefly. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, my fellow panel members have spoken a lot, and. I hope you've learned something because I've learned a lot from them. I'd just like to add one or two things to what they have said. Um, yes, I went to Kobo Girls. I had my own challenges. I'll just start, um, take one of the major things that I felt was a challenge at the time. Trying to keep up. You see, let's say you are in Presec and we, we've heard of the excellence and all that. And you know, it's like all the people across country who had their best grades all meeting in one institution trying to compete for something. That was how I, I felt like all the ladies I met in my class were good and you have to keep up, you have to learn, you have to do this, like you have to live up to expectations. So I was trying to do that. I have to always be studying and all that. I was believing in my own abilities. I was believing in my own strength when the person supplying us with strength is indeed God. A lot of them, especially the second was like, eh, this is where, like, um, when he came to Presec, that's where he found God and all that. I also say when I went to Kobo Girls, I got to know God better. And I'll add up that God is everywhere. You can find him anytime. It's up to you to take that decision. Because there are other people who also went to Kobo at the time I went, who lost it, like who drifted away from God. Why will some people draw closer and others uh, drift away? It's your own personal decision. So you look up to people around you, some of your classmates who are so like on fire. You, you feel like, can I ever be that way? It is your decision to make, okay? So just some two principles that helped me while I was there. Amongst all the um, intelligent people, I didn't want to be the best. I wanted to be the different one. It's one thing to be the different one and one thing to be the best. You are all good students and, well, the eight A's you got, that's the same eight ways someone else also got. But what makes you stand out amongst all the others? Yearn to be different rather than yearning to be the best. Mostly in, in your journey to becoming different, you find out that you eventually be the best, okay? And one other thing is to never forget the goodness of God. Never forget the goodness of God. At certain points in your life, you feel like God has given up on you. Like, but then you, you forget that ah, 
at, at some point in my life, I prayed to God about this and he gave it to me. I did this and then he gave it to me. But then because of your current circumstance, you may give up on God and then you forget. One thing I would like to advise you never to do is to forget. Never forget God. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please, can we put our hands together for them as they take their seats? All right. um, I understand there's administration from the Presec Band. Can we receive the best boys band in the country? Uh, we are waiting for... The Presec Band, please, are you here? So we would, we would like to move on. The band will come in later. We would like to receive the... I'll introduce him better later on, but we would like to receive the man that bears this vision, the leader of this wonderful organization, to introduce a very wonderful person to us who will take us for the first session. Please, let's receive Mr. Nelson. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I can't feel you at all. Look to your neighbor. Say neighbor. Say neighbor, neighbor. We have come for campus pop-up. Say neighbor. Before you leave here today, you'll be pop-up. You'll be popped up. Say neighbor, neighbor. I want you to get ready. Something is about to drop on you. Say neighbor. Watch me, watch me, watch me. After today, I am becoming another person. You didn't hear me at all. Hallelujah. I've been trying to mention this, whether it's Greek or Hebrew, but I can only mention in. The rest will follow. In the light. Please, the three seconds, let's mention in. Hallelujah. Unless I speak in tongues. Hallelujah. We thank God for today. Uh, we have a very wonderful man of God in our midst who is going to, I don't want to even say what she's going to do. Hallelujah. Uh, almost say I'll grow any day. Okay, so without much ado, I want us to be on our feet as we invite the, the manager of 565. The only mommy Gezi we have in the whole Ghana. Hallelujah. Mommy, please, you are welcome. The guys at the top, you'll be my target. So wave at me. Yeah. How are we? When, when I walked in and, and the music was happening and the jumping was happening, the thought that popped up was, hey, in the president and the ministers, no more reason. Then I started thinking about my presec friends. So in my home, currently, we are torn between whether a certain little man in my house will go to Augustine's or come to presec. <laughs> 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 
Wow. So this, this is one school where somehow I have too many friends from. But in my family, every boy goes to Infantipim. So, uh, <laughs> I know. The way, the way I do things, I don't know whether it's just me. This microphone is giving me some feedback. Let's try another one. Okay, the other microphone says I have to use this. I'm going to give you three minutes. Three minutes, everybody. I'm giving you three minutes. And please don't expect me on the stage forever. I'll be coming down. So my sound people, please control me when I'm going too far. Three minutes. I want you to move from where you are now and speak to nine people. I'm not going to tell you, hey. <laughs> and you know where they are going, right? They are coming right here. <laughs> You have, okay, 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 okay. Guys, let's listen to the instructions. I'm going to give you three minutes. I need you to move around, speak to nine people. After that, I'm going to ask nine people what they spoke about. Do we understand? Yes. Okay, the clock starts now. Let's go. Three minutes. Hello? Hello? <laughs> we have one more minute. One more minute. Right, we have to take our seats now. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello. Shall we please be seated now? I still see a lot of movement and I hear a lot of talking. Thank you. Right, so welcome Accra girls. 
And my apologies for missing your session. I'm really sorry, okay? Nice. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Nice. I, I don't know if you have female teachers in the school. You do. Look at their faces when they say, yeah. They don't look like the best teachers, do they? You don't like them? You don't? Ow. Can I come and teach here? Yeah. Woo! I'll come, okay? Right. Now, I have been out of this kind of uniform for 25 years. Yes. By the grace of God. I finished secondary school 25 years ago. I saw the last batch of... So next year, um, Bernard and Co. will be coming to do their Silver Jubilee and will be doing ours as well. I went to Fijai Secondary School. We are neighbors with the Porter's girls. And I went to a mixed school for a reason. I chose to be in a mixed school for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> Good. And no, the, the, the school I went to was not my choice at all. We had three choices at the time as well. And I definitely didn't want to go to Fijai Secondary School. I wanted to go to Achimota Secondary School. And it was for one reason, you'll be surprised. I, I used to watch the National Science and Math Quiz when I was in, yes, it's been that long, but it was still very early. And Achimota looked like the best science school in Ghana at that time. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't want to be just with girls. So when I thought of um, which science school could I go to, I said that Chimota. And my dad was very concerned because at that time we, we had moved from Tema to Takrade. And he thought, if you are in Accra, that's a very far away place. And I get migraines. So my father thought, you know, if you were in Cape Coast, um, then if you got a migraine, I could come over and get you a lot quicker. But Accra is far. You know, it's not like today. There were no cell phones. We had a standing phone at home. You had to go and get a phone card, walk to a phone booth, on an allocated time to be able to call home. So we agreed that I would choose Wesley Girls. And it was okay. Being a Methodist, my friends were going to Wesley Girls. It was in Cape Coast. The distance was a bit short. So we chose Wesley Girls. And that was a very deciding stage of my life. When the results came, I had, I don't remember, we're doing 12 subjects in our days. I think I got 10 ones. And they said... <laughs> and they said to me, oh, you know, you have to get 12 ones to do science. So they gave me arts. Yes, very sadly. Oh, Miss Uyo, I cried, Papa. <laughs> I really cried. I wanted to be a medical doctor. Already they were calling me all of that at home. So when I got 10 ones, Wesley Girl said, mm -mm, general arts it is. In our days, actually we were the last batch in secondary school to
So when the results came and my aunt was the secretary to the Western Regional Minister, and she said, Mommy, you know, we could actually take you to Holy Child. It's equally good. I'm like, no, it's a Catholic school. I don't want it. Eh? I didn't know anything. That's the truth. And unlike what you are getting now, we had nothing like this. So every decision you took, either your parents knew what to do and they guided you, you had an uncle or an auntie sitting somewhere who could guide you, or when they are going then to you go some like this. We didn't have a lot in the system at that time. So the guidance was very little and rare. Now, I decided to, one day, I, I just up and said, I'm going to go to Fiji to do science, because they got me science. And I went into class just like, who was talking about the rejectables? Daniel. To my left was a pre-second reject. In front of me, another Wesley girls reject. I was sitting by the window. Behind me, holy child reject. Adisco reject. Orgasco reject. We were reject. Put together. But to the school, we were the best students. Because we're the ones with the 10 ones and 8 ones. And we, you know, in our days, if, if, you, if they asked you what was your result and you said a number, then it means that so you start saying I got six six means that you got six ones and then seven eight nine when you want to show the difference you say I got this number of ones like we say with A's now so we we started the class and in second term I got Wesley girls by which time my friends from Wesley girls had come home and you know how they do their thing and the way they walk, and I'm like, nah, I'm not sure I want to do this. Nah, I ain't going. So I didn't go. So I stayed in Fiji. Was it a mistake? No. Because when you think back, and I look at myself right now, everybody has said the same thing. When your purpose is playing out, it will look like a lot of mistakes put together until you get to the realization that this was God's plan all the while. Now let me shock you, fast forward. I was sitting in class like this, and I was a second in my row, and my literature teacher will come. He used to teach us um, core English. This thing sitting here, that's how he used to call me. Somehow, Mr. Moses means that we still chat. This thing sitting here, it doesn't belong here. And then everybody will turn and look, and they will laugh, because if you didn't find me with a book, you would find me, I mean, every time I'm reading something, and for an elective, so it was also in our time that they introduced the possibility for science students to do four um, electives. My first option was biology, and we took on math. Oh my God, I'm like, uh, this was me in art math class. Like, I couldn't see a thing. Seriously, I could not see anything. This man will say, this thing sitting here, it doesn't belong here. Then we'll ask, they will ask, where does it belong in Arts 2? But I never left. Results come. Yeah. <laughs> SSE. We wrote SSE. And I'll tell you what. It is the most, I think, the most difficult exams anybody could think of for me. Because BEC was a given, you know, you're so young, you, you know, SSC is when you've had all these confusions coming up. Some people set the exam, some people teach you, some people mark, some people grade. That's how the WIAC process goes for secondary school. But when you go to the university, the man comes, he brings us light, he sells you the books, he sets the question, and he marks, at best, a TA will help. So university is not the biggest deal. Your biggest deal, if you ask me when it comes to exam, is what you are in now. So if you're waiting to pop up at the university, what we'll blast it before you even start? So the result came, ace in core subject, E, physics. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yes. Um, C, chemistry. 
biology CB. I don't even, it was the worst. And you know, you're adding your three electives before you go and add the one one in the core. So when you add your electives already, what pattern on her? And you're looking for medicine to do in which university? It was almost unthinkable. And this is, this is not some, no, 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 no. I was part of the National Science and Math Quiz team for my school. So it's not like you are sitting here somewhere, some corner girl in class. So. Okay, now let me give you another shock. I represented my basic school. Who ever heard of um, brilliant math, um, brilliant, no, blue band, blue band quiz. Who ever has heard about, you've heard, blue band quiz, yes. And also now my plug, just I mean, I'm a shareholder. Uh, with my school. So there are lots of expectations. And at home, grandma calls me doctor. Even without going to secondary school, me and my ma prescription will say, oh, mommy, me see me. oh, let's go and get this medicine. My year doctor that, <laughs> without going to school. It was, so it was a very, very big problem for me. And all my mates were going to the university. And you know what happened? Immediately the results came. Everybody started moving around. Okay, what can we get? What can we get? Some people went to UCC, they went to read raw biology, um, chemistry. I didn't even know what it was. So when my dad asked me, so my what are you eventually going to do? I said, Dad, if I go and do biochemistry, what would I become? I didn't know. I had no clue what I could use environmental chemistry. If I went to UCC to read environmental chemistry, what would that give me? All I knew is, if you went to school, you did medicine, you could become a doctor. You did pharmacy, you become a pharmacist. If you did educational course, you became a teacher. You know, so there were straight line courses that were very obvious to me. The rest, no clue. Intimacy my doctor, at worst, apologies, pharmacist. Not just say, nothing more. But your grades couldn't take you. So I immediately went to write a remedial, naturally. Did the remedial and moved all my math courses to B's. Still, my electives could not get me. And in our days, you needed to come to Legon, which I wanted to come to. Do two years. Third year, you wrote an exam. So you did what we call the biological science. Then you wrote an exam. After the exam, they selected the best, interviewed them. After the interview, they decided who would go to medical school. And one of my seniors, she went to Wesley Girls, we were in Sunday school together. She, I don't know if anybody is more intelligent than Diana, she got seven A's and a B from Wesley Girls. When she didn't make it to medical school, I said, huh? Oh yeah, I'm not gonna go and do any biological. Because it was almost sounding like a cha-cha. You know, you could go and, and then there were stories. My best friend was there, she was studying so hard and, and eventually she had to become a paying student. All these things didn't make sense to me, honestly. I had no clue. In between, well wishes would come. So somebody would come, mommy, um, Polytechnic. I said, what do the people go to Poly to do? I didn't want it. Teacher training, nursing, whatever, no, in our time, if you read science in secondary school, you couldn't go to the teacher training school or something. That was a very funny thing, very restrictive. But eventually, I took another 12 months break. In that period, did so many things. I started about four NGOs. I opened my own arts gallery, got art artists to do things, stocked my shop. I was selling to white people, blah, blah, blah. I was still 18 years, the story that I'm telling, because I finished secondary school just before I was 17. So stocked my shop, I was doing well, you know, doing different things. I had been on air, I had done radio from age 14, so I was going to the radio station all the while, and I was just, I had all the platforms. One day I got up and said, I needed to go back to school. I'm 18, so I got up, went to register myself for another remedial, and this time, this was sometime maybe July, Novdek, or yeah, July, September. Um, July, so November, 
October, September, I guess. So it must have been end of July. I took a decision. So I walked, um, I took a car and went to GSTS in Takradi. And I said, I wanted to come and do classes to go and write my remedials. When I got there, the economics teacher that I had been recommended, so this time I decided to do art. Remember, the art that a year before or four years before had been given at my choice school that I had rejected. I said I wanted to go and do that. So I went to myself, got money from my dad, went to the French center, registered for French, found my former English teacher, the one that called me this thing. And he said, finally, you found the light. Yeah. So I went, he said he would teach me the literature for free, give me prescriptions, go and buy the books. Then I went to register for economics. So I guess September, October, I started writing my exam in November. I wrote economics, French, and literature, and made three Bs in all three of them. So the question is, ah, but if you could do this, why didn't you do it in secondary school? Because people had sat in secondary school for three years and got Fs in French back to back to back. The lesson I want you to glean from this is, if God made it a straight way, I would have been a statistic. One good student who went from BEC to SSC to the university probably practicing somewhere as a medical doctor, minding my business, would never be standing here before you today. Because I am Why I am very passionate, so one of the NGOs I started was called The Creators. Very passionate about the choices. And for me, actually, this level is a bit late. It is at the BEC level that the conversations must be had. One of the things that I learned when I was going to read communication, so I did the three programs, and I said I wanted to do communication studies because by that time, I had redefined myself. And when I went to the communication school, the school director was like, um, okay, so what are your results? And I said, I have quite a number of them. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did, because I had my original school result, the one with the uh, physics, chemistry, biology, and art math. I had the remedial results of the science where I had done better in my math courses. And I had my general arts results with only the three subjects. So I said, oh, I have a number of them, but you know, I want to present this because hey, I don't know what three Bs, isn't it? And we didn't have B1, B2, no, 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 no. It was B or B. <laughs> you either got a B or no. So I, I said, no, I'm interested in your science results. So I sent him that. And he said, I like students like this. Why? Because in their minds, the journalism space and the communication space was fraught with people who could just speak nicely. They would interview and they would just ask straight questions. What science does for you? For those of you reading science, and apologies, I'm not saying any other subject is not great. What science does for you as a young person is it changes your perception of thinking. And there is no other program in this world, and I'm saying this on authority, that you cannot do if you read science at the secondary school level. If you went to the business school now, and I'm, I'm speaking because I know somebody very close who teaches there, they'll tell you, the best business school students, be it um, economics, be it um, business manager, whatever course, administration, whatever course, even accounting, the best accounting students at the business school now are those who read science, not those who did accounting in secondary school. You'll be, you'll be amazed. So when you get the basics right, and do not think that once you are doing science, you must be in a laboratory. No. It doesn't work like that. That once you are doing art, you must end up as a lawyer. It doesn't work like that. And my friends on the panel were telling you, 
when you are getting all these twists, the question is, what is God telling you? And some of us get it quite early. I have friends my age who are still figuring out exactly what they want to do. Yeah, you'll be thinking, "Mm, that will not be me. Wait until you get there. There are people who have lived another life in their life for 60 years, retired. They are retired and tired because they have lived another life, not theirs. So one of the best things, and I always say, that can ever happen to anybody after salvation is to find yourself. And a lot of people go through life never to find themselves. And guess what? For the few that find themselves as well, very, very few out of that number actually are courageous enough to live it. Because A, there are expectations. B, there are standards to keep up. I have a a little girl. All she ever wanted to do, ever, ever wanted to do was to be a children teacher. But for three generations, everybody has a law degree in the family. So you are not even asked, sweetie, what's your name? Esther. Nobody comes and says, Queen Esther, what do you want to do? No. Wherever secondary school you go to, and it's usually Abugis, Presec, or Achimota, you go to one of these schools. If you're a girl, Abugis or Achimota. If you're a boy, Presec or Achimota. When you're done, you go to the University of Ghana. Their names are there. So you finish, you do LLB. You finish, you go to Mokola. When you finish, you wear the wig. That's their life. So when they, every time I'm talking to her, I'm like, hey, you're crying. So when you have family meetings, how does it go? She's like, oh, leave me. You know, can you imagine? Grandfather is a lawyer downwards. Judge, if I mention the names, you would know them. They're very known in Ghana. All they do is law. Nobody gives you a choice. Nobody asks you of your opinion. Nobody asks you what you really desire to do. If you are fortunate to come from a home where somebody will sit with you and listen to your own version of yourself and give you an opportunity to guide you, be very grateful because it is not common. And the parent plug they were talking about, so my parent plug is, in my home, my dad never said, mommy, you need to do this. No, you were asked. So right now, what exactly do you want to do? And for a lot of you, when you ask that, you're like, ah, I don't know. Me, I had about 10 things. But you can't be 10 things in life. So you're either confused or you are lost. And one of the deepest meanings to my life I always go back to, is my click in Sunday school? And that is why I'm telling you, if you have not found Christ, as for God, everybody knows he's there. It doesn't matter where you're coming from. But if you haven't found Christ, there could be some sort of form and shape to your life. But true meaning comes from that. True meaning for your life. And there's this inner joy. Ask them, those who came up, when we finish, just go around and ask them. And I still haven't forgotten, I'm going to bring nine people up and ask what you asked the nine people you, you spoke with. If you ask them, the times when they were doing things, I think, um, what's your name? Portis. Stephanie. Stephanie mentioned it. Um, our man who ran from business, um, science to do business, where is he? Yes. Godfred also mentioned it. You are there and you're like, mm, I don't like it. You, you will feel it until you are in your zone. Until you are in your zone. So if you are doing a certain program, I don't know whether you are forced to do the course or you decided because my big brother or my father did that program. You need to get to a point where you are able 
and convinced that this is what I want to do with my life. How many of us brought in writing materials, not just the Bible, writing materials, pen, paper? Okay, I want everybody to bring up I want everybody to take their pens and their books or papers. Everybody here knows Venn diagram. How many circles are in Venn diagram? How many circles are in Venn diagrams? I'm hearing different answers. How many circles are in Venn diagrams? Somebody says six. <laughs> okay. We are going to draw what I call the Venn of purpose. In my Venn of purpose, there are four circles. Yes. So draw your four circles and have an intersection. And I'm coming round to see. Some people came with our pen and writing books. You don't have to put them in a square. We are going to let the circles be free. I wanted to show you up, but I don't have a flip, so... So we'll do the Venn. How many of us have our four circles? So you're going to have something like this. I'm showing you because I don't want you to do any computer view. I, I do it all the time. Too small. I wanted to do it on a flip stand, but we couldn't get that. So four circles have an intersection. And don't be restricted how you are naming your circles. Please, if you need help, ask. Ask for help if you need help. But I'll need you to create quite some space where we have the four intersections because you write in them. Name one of your circles, enjoy doing. Just write, enjoy doing enjoy doing. Name another easy to do. Write in them. So your circles must be big enough. Some of you are squishing your circles. I see the technical students, the way they're drawing their circles. I can see the art students. I can see the science students. Call another circle, earn you money doing. Earn you money doing. Your last circle will be called benefit others when you do. Benefit others when you do. So your four circles. How many of us are there? Please, do you need me to go over? Okay. So first circle is called enjoy doing. Sorry. Enjoy doing. Your second circle, easy to do. Easy to do. Your third, earn you money doing. Earn you money doing. And the fourth, benefit others when you do. Benefit others when you do. So where your 
intersection is between, okay, so let's, let's label them so that it's easy and my sentences will be shorter. Where enjoy doing meets with benefit others doing, call it A. Call it A. Where the easy to do is meeting enjoy doing, call it B. I really wish I could show you this in front. Where your easy to do intersects with earn you money doing, call it C. And where your earn you money doing intersects with benefits others when you do, call it D. Call it D. Have we labeled our intersections? Okay, great. So now what you enjoy doing and you find it easy to do, that's literally your passion. Call it passion, call it your hobbies. Please, are we clear? Okay. Some people are not clear, and I would like somebody to come in front if you are not clear. Anybody not clear? Okay. Shall we go on? Because of time. All right. Now, where your easy to do and earns you money when you are doing, I call it your talent or vocation, your talent. That's your given skill. You don't struggle to do it and it can pay you some money. Now what you are able to do very easily, so um, sorry, what you, you, yes, what you do that earns you money and also benefits others. I call it an occupation. An occupation. Some people call it your profession. Yeah? Now, what benefits others when you do and you also enjoy doing, I call it your calling, I call it your ministry, some people call it your mission. So that could be your calling, your ministry, or your mission. So if you gave examples, yeah, at every point, so for instance, the example I have here, this was a session with a client. What he enjoys doing, teaching. What is easy for him to do, teaching. What earns him money when he's doing, teaching, farming, and speaking. What benefits others when he does, teaching, farming. So whatever is cutting across all your intersections, appearing more than twice, so you should have something that is appearing about three times, that will come in your Venn bullet point. And that is what I call your purpose. It is not easy for a lot of you to do this at this stage because you haven't even figured it out. I'm not sure you've thought about, what do I really enjoy doing? We, who are the best dancers in the school right now? Five. Five. Six. Okay. No, 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 seriously. I need, I need who, who are the best dancers? I need two of them. Oh, I need them to come forward. Come. Oh. 
Okay, here. Yeah. What's your name? Hello? 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 Sound. Sound. We need sound. Hello? 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 Mike. Okay, we are going to share the microphone. So, what's your name? Oti Justice. Which one is your first name? Um, Ot <laughs> Hello. Hello. What's your name? Oti Justice. Which is your first name? Oti. Justice, Justice, yeah. Okay, right. So this is just by the way. People, I know that we are writing our names a lot of the times with our second names. But there's, it's not for any reason that it's called a first name and a second name. Please, when you're calling it, when I sit in interviews to discuss people's persons, and even ladies, I don't know how I, I, I can ever... Somebody ask me and I'm say I'll, I'll go like I'm called Gazy Mommy. Like it sounds so. Anyway, but I get a lot of that. People call their surnames first, so it's Aka. Oh, I say Wakansa Manaka. It's okay. You, you, you are Justice. Justice. So you are a renowned dancer. Yeah. What, what course are you doing? General arts. General arts. What are your electives? Emat, geography, economics, and government. Okay. Um. Are you going to be a professional dancer? Not really. Not really. And I like that response. At this point, he doesn't even know. He enjoys it. You enjoy yeah, it. Yeah. It comes very naturally to you. Yeah, yeah. When you are doing it, people come to watch you. Yeah. yeah. They like it. <laughs> It does not mean that that will be his profession. Please, we understand. So all of you people who are crying, Justice, thank you very much. All of you who are crying because you are great painters, please listen, this is very serious because we get a lot of people talking about passion and purpose on the internet and they are telling every young person, go all out and do whatever your heart desires. Oh, wow. But if you don't get paid for it, I'm going to tell you, you're going to starve to death. Reality. I'm telling you, I love what I do. I can do it and do it and do it. But I get paid for it. I'm speaking here not because I've been paid for it, but I speak elsewhere and get paid for it. And I could speak the whole week, every day, every time. Uh, everybody who knows me, this man, he knows me. Everybody who knows me. They know I can hold the microphone. You can call me morning, evening, afternoon. Uh, I can come and speak. I have stories. Uh -uh. That's what I do. That's my life. I get paid for it. But guess what? I do other things that are not speaking at all. And they actually rain in the bigger dough. Yeah. So the painting that you are doing, eh, that you are so passionate about, you better polish it and learn it so that when I walk into a gallery, I can pick your painting and pay USD proper for it. But if it's this all, you are just painting people, they are sitting and you like it, then you put it together, you go and give it to your friend for free. And you think, because you enjoy doing it and it comes to you so easily, everybody should leave you. All I ever want to do is to paint. Paint your life away, but you're going to starve to death. I like how you wear your glasses on that. <laughs> He's not even listening. <laughs> yeah, please, you understand. So definitely follow your heart desires and your passion and everything, but you must have a life. What those people don't tell you is when the bills come, passion has to earn you money. The best spot you find yourself is when your passion is giving you money and is benefiting others. 
that's the best place to find yourself. So these two human beings, they can pray for 36 hours. Me, we all share the same father, and this man sitting there. But honestly, me, I can't pray. I can't. I can't pray for 24 hours continuous. But these people, but they don't pray to earn money. It comes to them easily. They love doing it. When you hear him speak, you can hear, oh, you can hear like the prayer voice. I love it. But he, they do other things. And they are happy doing it because it is somewhat connected to what they love to do. So finding your purpose. For instance, when I was coming, I want, Mr. Projector, just go through my slides. I had slides beautifully done, spent the whole night, polished it up, like, you know, because I was coming to pre sec and I didn't want Bernard to come and say, I hear Mami Gezi came and she didn't do show. So I had to, you know, come in all of my glory. But I bedroom, uh -huh. I me to I share atmosphere, I share calculation, I share Pythagoras theorem, I share Kekana. Now me share economics, demand and supply in the French. Je viens, j'arrive no more here now. If I don't, more better that. More better that, me, me, I cannot, I know that would not be my portion. So I had to change. The story I told you, it's right here. Go through so they can read it. It's everything I've told you is here. When you get to a place where you need to change your tactics and you insist... So your parents are telling you, some, a teacher calls you and tells you something. I think this will be good for you. What's the media? Media me hon, ni amaka no, eno an amaka, we en yankopon, ube blasti. Do you understand? So please, on your purpose, I want you to know a few things. These are the things that I required. You must always be in tune with the Holy Spirit if you want to find your true purpose. For those of you who are writing notes, you must always be in tune with the Holy Spirit for those of you who are looking to find your purpose. You must strive for excellence. And please, excellence is not a destination. You don't become excellent and stay. It's a, it's, it's a habit. It's a continuous habit. You must do things every time to define your excellence. And you must have focus. And for all those who came here, they'll tell you, we had to learn. We had to study. Whatever you are doing, Please focus, find focus, and dedication. There are too many times that you'll be swayed, but dedication would give you your goal. And please, like it or not, even with the things that like he dancing or me speaking, it still requires a lot of hard work. You can't, you can, sometimes you can wink it like, oh, yeah, then you just do it and it happens. But those ones will not give you consistent results. If you want consistent, excellent results, you need to put in the works. And that brings us to the end of my session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take... Hey, Papa, you need to me He says two questions. Please. Yeah. So we'll take some questions. Please walk up here and take a microphone. Or I should give you. Okay. Questions. I, I want to ask if uh, education, education is very important, you know, but what, what if I could learn programming, coding, or something somewhere else than me studying my time in uh, this curriculum? 
whereby we learn uh, one thing, one thing, like you learn social studies and all, all the, like the passive who have learned, you also learn the same thing. Whilst I can also like, well, when, when I can also get new and innovative like stuff from different parts, because I actually had an idea to make this car whereby it uses a trusted to move, but I realized that someone else has created it. So like, I feel like uh, the, the old stuff we learn, it actually like, brings, gives us ideas of the old stuff like other people are also creating. It doesn't really give us, it moves us forward. That's what I think. Good, very good question. Yeah, oh clap for him. Great. Can we take another question so I can respond to them? Accra Girls, ladies, you must register your presence before these gentlemen think that. Mm, don't disappoint. <laughs> there's another hand. Okay, there's another. Can we have um, two cordless? Microphones, cordless, the only two. Okay, so let's say like, uh, I love, I love to do music. Good. And I love to do music. Good. And my dad is forcing me to do that, maybe an engineering course. Mm. How will I go about it? Okay, good question. Lovely. Please, madam, has there ever been a time, whilst you were, whilst you were speaking, you said that there were times where you wanted to do something, you wanted to do, pursue science, but you ended up doing art. Has there ever been a time that you felt that, and you felt like you have to change, you have to change the course? And did you ever feel like when you change, it will have an influence on you, on your family? And how did you deal with it? What was your motivation to drive you to do the better thing? Good. So we'll take these three questions, okay? We'll respond to these three. So we'll start from the first gentleman. He's asking, this whole education, education, in his mind, a lot of the times, we are learning people's done things, yeah? Please, if I'm not getting your question correct, please correct me. We are learning things that people have already done. So if you're looking to channel your discovery into new areas, how do you do it with, without going through this proven path? I want you to note the difference between schooling and education. There are two things. Very early in my life, I used to joke with my mom. And I used to tell her, I kind of feel there are a lot of uneducated literates. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of educated and schooled. Sunking, great. Your going through school does not make you educated. You don't only gain education by going through formal schooling. Education is learning and imbibing anything it could be a theory it could be a scale it could be an art it could be anything through a means of learning so you're learning and now learning is not just sitting in the classroom it's not just about somebody being there it could be through a system and ai could lead you through it so if you want to do something you definitely would require an education in that by getting yourself self-taught or mentored or coached, but you may not necessarily go through a formal school system. Please, is that clear? Now, yes, by all means, if you have a desire to learn something, please be educated in it. The advantage is that it makes you bigger. You might think it's wasting your time, but there's a cap when you are not educated in something and you're just doing it. 
it creates a cup. You'll be surprised. You might feel all oh, this theory. And a lot of people are on, on, on the social media and on air bastardizing everything, education, formal. They have their own faults. But be very careful that you are not swayed into thinking that you can just go through life and appear. No. You hear the people that don't have any secondary school education, but they are the millionaires. They are the ones paying the PhD holders. You hear all those stories, right? There are limitations. If they, weren't, if they knew how to do all the things, why are they hiring the PhD people in the first place? And without those people with the theories, those vision and ideas and the dreams they have wouldn't get to the extent they do. So the smart and schooled educated people will definitely go for some people in their circle to realize their dreams. So depending on where you find it, and that can be a very personal, I can't generalize a lot of the things. If I spoke to this lady and we went into her life and what she wants to do, the conversation would be different from if I spoke with this gentleman. Please, you get it. So, but please get education. Please, by all means, especially if your parents or you have guardians that are willing to pay, go for it. Go to school. Get it online. Whatever it is, get educated. Those theories, I, for instance, let me give a very basic example. I wondered how somebody could actually pour water on yam that would be cooked six hours later. It looked, people do it. But my osmosis theory tells me, why would you do that? And it's, what, 25 years ago, 27 actually, from um, Form 1, you understand? I, I tell the people in my home, if you want to keep your water a little warmer for longer, you need to pour in a bit of cold water. And what theory am I employing? Temperature gradient. If you study temperature gradients, you know that the steeper the temperature between the two environments, so that's your hot water and the cold environment, the quicker it is for the hot molecules to move from the hot water into the cold environment. It's very simple. I learned this in Form 1, and it's informing the way I live life. So don't look at these things as make or exams, get an A, apply them. That is when you are getting an education. Yes, to uh, my friend, the one that asked me the last question. Oh, yes, there were different times I felt, oh, I made a mistake in getting into art, and I still should have pursued the, the science. But I now know that it was all part of it. I was supposed to go through that channel to be who I am today. The impact on my family, I must admit, and I don't like people who come up with horrible stories to um, get the sympathy of people. I didn't have any pressures from home. And I know a lot of people who go through a lot of pressures, they have to do things some way because mommy and daddy are expecting some things. I didn't go through that. So there was nothing like a disappointed dad. My dad just knew that whatever I decided to do, he would support me and it was okay. So that, that was my fortunate angle. The second question, yeah, it's raining. The second question was about, remind me again, the person here who asked the question. Yes. The man that wants to do music, but his dad wants him to do engineering. Uncle, can you imagine getting into musical engineering? Have you heard of medical doctors? A lot of them. And most of you will become medical doctors and decide to read law. Uncle pharmacist, he can still become a lawyer. Do you know why the doctors are doing law now? Because the lawyers make it look like learned. Not just say, I'm going to work eight years, no more So they want to prove to them. And I have met medical doctors that are lawyers, and they are, and they are a lot better than the raw lawyers. That's me. So please, yes, you can do the music on the side. And if you are doing the music, please be sure to be doing the kind of music that will pay you good monies so that dad will be proud and happy in the end. But you could combine the two, really. You could do engineering and music at the same time. You don't have to drop one for the other. Is that okay? All right. Thank you.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you have found yourself today. What are we telling our mother? Please, I want us to be on our feet and appreciate her for this wisdom nugget. Hallelujah. <laughs> Mommy, God bless you so much. God bless you. Hallelujah. Uh, because of our time, we have to cast one or two things off. But I know we have been blessed. Hallelujah. Uh, please, let's humbly take our seat. We want to invite the choreography team from Pantai School to come and give us the ministration. Our friend from Pantai, nursing training, they don't only give injections, they can also dance to revive us. Hallelujah. Please, let's appreciate them as they come on board.
and coming in He shut the room and so I said press down and running over And then my going out and coming in He shut the room and so I said press down and running over ah, ah, See Monday at the type Tuesday at the soul Wednesday at the hammer Then you the take away See Monday at the type Tuesday at the soul Wednesday at the hammer Then you the take away ah, Take away, healing up, take away, how I get, take away, take away, take away, blessing up, take away, healing up, take away, how I get, take away, take away, take away. Born into victory, my past is a history. Your blessings they rain on me, I they take them like glucose. Hey, once beka beka, but now give a give a. Tada sa ta da na na da da ta ta ne na ne na. Hey, when ya me she run, no one she trust. Want me, I they take away. I me be, I me I they take away. When ya me she run, no one wait to let me, I they take away. I me be, I me. Thank you so much, um, our sisters from Pantine. At this ranch, I want to receive a wonderful ministration from my brother who is in our midst. Please let's receive Minister Denzel to lead us in a wonderful session. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, the whole place is full. <laughs> Shall we be on our feet everywhere you are? Okay, so as I was praying um, to come for this event, I'm just here for one purpose, okay? The Lord is telling me that he wants to reconnect some hearts this uh, morning or afternoon. Yeah, afternoon. Yeah, so whatever I'm about to do here is not a joke, okay? Get serious. Because God has something special for you. Some of you, um, today will be a turnaround in your lives, amen. And um, I know that from today, God is going to do great things with you, amen. Can we do this? Just close your eyes and just bless the Lord wherever you are. Just close your eyes and bless Him. I'm coming back to the heart of worship It's all about you It is all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the things I've made And it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. You want to lift your voice and sing with me? It's all about you. Tonight, that was one for connect you. It's all about you, Jesus. Lord, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. 
singing this song for somebody here. It's all about you. It's all about you, Lord. It's all about you. One more time. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. Singing it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. Now put your hands on your chest and say, say, it's all about you. Come on, let's do it. It's all about you. Just reconnect with him this afternoon. Come on. In. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about to say, it's all about you. It's all about you. Father, it's all about you, Lord. It's all about to say. Oh, Rabbi Hashaya, sing and say, it's all about to say. I told you that God wants to reconnect some hearts to this place. That is what I came to do. That is what I came to do. I am desperate for you, say. I am desperate for you. Urafaya keto rafaya. Singing and I am desperate for you, say. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. 
and it's working on your Personal commitment with holding, with holding nothing, with holding nothing, with holding nothing, Father, with holding nothing, say it with holding nothing. treasure of my heart and of my soul I love this part in my weakness you are merciful let's sing just that part treasure of my heart say. treasure of my heart and of my soul you know that weakness I'm talking about in my weakness you are merciful Treasure of my heart and of my soul. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you are merciful. In my weakness, you are Just stay there. Merciful. Treasure of my heart and of my soul. As it's happened to me, say, Yo. Let's sing this part together. No instruments. No instruments. No instruments. Everybody let your voice say, Oh Jesus, say, Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. I told you God wants to reconnect some hearts. It's not a showmanship. It is not a showmanship. Oh Jesus. Oh, oh, by Jesus. 
Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven. Let's do this last song. Put your hands on the chest. Sing, my Jesus, my Savior. Oh, there is none like you. Oh, Father, all of my days. I want to praise the wonders of your mind. Oh, come on. Love. My comfort, everybody say, my comfort, my shelter, my shelter. Say, tower of refuge, of refuge, and strength. give all the glory unto Jesus. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. If you can speak in tongues, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Jesus, Jesus. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. That this morning the Lord will meet you at the point of your need. Lift up your voice in the space of one minute. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Shall we sing this song? your voice and say it is Jesus, Jesus. Oh. Oh, 
Yosahine Amena Kutudo Yesu Yebe Kutudo Na Yebe Bo Nilida Yewe Yonyame Yosahine Amena Sorino Yesu Yebe Sorino Na Yebe Bo have your way this morning Lord we have come before you that you will touch our lives that you will transform us oh Lord have your way this is the hour to impact your people Father change our lives in the name of Jesus Amen please kindly take your seat with me for the next just 10 minutes hallelujah hallelujah praise the Lord Tell your neighbor, you have to work with me. Say, neighbor, neighbor, now is the time. You have to work with me. Hallelujah. Please, can you humbly project First Samuel chapter 17 from the verse 12? Because of time, I'll just make it very brief. Hallelujah. Now, David was the son of the Ephraimite, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons. The man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul, the verse 13. And the three elder sons of Jesse went to follow Saul to the battle. And the names of the sons that went onto the battlefield were Eliab the first, Abinadab the second, and Shammah the third, the verse 14. And David, the youngest, and the three elders followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. The verse 16. And the Philistine drew near in the morning and presented himself forty days. And Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for thy brethren the food and this corn, that they may eat and run to the camp. And he carried this ten cheese to the captain of the sheep where the brethren were and their bondage. The verse 19. Now Saul, they and all the men of Israel in the valley of Lem were fighting with the Philistine called Goliath. The verse 20. And David rose early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And when he came to the battlefield and he saw what was going forth and the fight, and they shouted for the battle. For the Israel and the Philistine had put the battle in Ari, army against army. And David said, Is there not a cause? Hallelujah. Amen. This morning, this afternoon, sorry, we are privileged to have our mother here. She has shared a lot concerning how we can find ourselves. And the panel we also have, they also spoke about their experiences from their SHS to the tertiary level. But this afternoon, I want to just exalt you on the team I have entitled that you are a game changer. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Say my brother, my brother. You are a game changer. You are a game changer. You are, you are not hearing me. That's why you are sitting down. Say my sister, my sister. You are a game changer. You are a game changer. You are born for greatness. You are born to make a difference. Say I am a game changer. I can't feel the pre seconds in the house at all. I can't feel you. Rise up. Rise up. Just one minute. I want you to walk to your neighbor. Say neighbor. Say my brother, my brother. My sister, my sister. 
you are a game changer you are made for a difference you have been born for such a time like this and you are not going to die like that say my brother my brother watch me watch me i may be small in size i may be a small boy i may be a young lady but i am a game changer i am the one the ghana is waiting for i am the president that our nation is waiting for i am that medical doctor that the nation is waiting for if you can hear me shout and say i am the god changer you can take your seat hallelujah jesus malagrasis stona malagrasis salahas umandi katala grasus imindu soka dili asis father have your way people of god as young as we are and the age we may be and where we find ourselves if you don't take care what is going on in our society and what is going on around us and even in our nation the economic crisis and the difficulties we are facing can let us feel like we are failures but i came to tell you this morning that you are not a failure you may have failed a paper but i came to declare that you are not a failure you are a game changer shout i am a game changer hallelujah when we talk about game changer or somebody being a game changer we are talking about an individual who is ready to make a difference we are talking about an individual who is ready to change the course of things we are talking about an individual who is ready to be a generational blessing we are talking about an individual who is ready to impact their generation that is why this morning you are blessed to be here and i know that after today your life will never be the same hallelujah you are a game changer you are unique you are not like any other person we all may be in presec we may all will be wearing the the school uniform you may be in Accra girls maybe some of us here we didn't even have the opportunity to go to SHS but I came to encourage you that you are born for a difference it doesn't matter the circumstance you are made to be a game changer it doesn't matter your background you are made to make a difference in the name of Jesus hallelujah the story you read I, I believe if you're a regular Sunday school member you know the story of David so I don't need to because of our time I'll just try and summarize this and give us about three or four keys that we can follow to become game changers hallelujah but the scripture read talks about david <laughs> it is interesting that david found himself actually when you meet those who are very knowledgeable in theology they will tell you that david was the youngest boy and he found himself in among his brethren who were seven so in addition to david they were eight and david being the youngest boy he was the one who was left to take care of the flock the father had this business he had a flock of sheep and he's the one that the father left that in the hands all the brothers the eight brothers the seven brothers they were in the house enjoying the good life they were enjoying good environment they were enjoying everything but david found himself on the other side of his life it wasn't easy for david david a young boy being a shepherd boy it looks like there was no hope for him actually when you check the background well when god sent prophet samuel to come and anoint someone in his house in jesse's house that is the father's house when they came they even forgot that david was part of the family and i know some of us here even we have been forgotten by our parents we have been forgotten by our friends but he was the one that the lord was looking for that is why i came to tell you that you were a game changer it doesn't matter what you are going through you are a game changer hallelujah so the story unfolds that david keeping the flock one day this guy called goliath he decided to intimidate the people of god he went into battle he told them that i am ready to defy the people of god so if you have any man who can represent you who can stand for you let him come forward and the bible says that 40 days they did not get anyone 
when you check the scripture, you get to understand that the people of Israel, they had the army, the best of army. In our country here, we have the military, we have the police, we have all the people. All those men, they guarded, including all the men in the nation. But still, they were afraid. They were intimidated. They were kept in bondage. But there was this young man called David. That one day, maybe by divine order, God said, David, you have been here for a long time. You just visit your father. Not knowing that the Lord was orchestrating an opportunity for him to become a game changer. David went. And the father said, you are the youngest. Your three brothers are on the field. They are waiting to battle Goliath. So you take this food and go and give it to them. And David, as a shepherd boy and as a humble boy, he took it. He got to the battlefield and he saw that this Philistine, this giant called Goliath, he was shouting, making all kinds of bribes. He was priding himself that I am the man. Nobody can defeat me. I am the boss. If anyone is able to fight me, let the person come forward. And this thing has gone on for 49, 40 days. But when David got there, he looked at this man. He said, who are thou? Who are thou? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who wants to defy the army of God? And when the brothers saw him and they heard, they said, you have come with your arrogance. You small boy, you are the one keeping the flock. You don't even deserve to be in the house. If by God's grace, you have been favored to live, to stop that labor work, that foolish labor. You have come to the house and our father has given you the privilege to come here. You are coming to brag here. But they didn't know. They didn't know that David was a game changer. Like we are sitting here. You may be despising someone. You may be undermining someone. Maybe the person doesn't even have a mattress. Maybe the person doesn't have a pillow. And you'll be saying that you are coming from a poor background. So you don't deserve. But little you don't know. You don't know. That not after many days. Not after many years. After Presec. We are going to be the game changers. The Bernard Avles that came here. Nobody thought that they are going to impact our nation our father the headmaster probably he came here and nobody knew him that one day he will become the headmaster maybe Reverend Watson was here one day and nobody thought that one day he will become the senior house master but we serve a God we serve a God who changes lives and when the Lord change your life you will become a game changer can you shout and say I am a game Changer. Imando la gracias. Si ni mi conda la has. Ami du la gracias. I vundi katala has. I me katila sus. Malagra sus sus if he had. Knowing that he has been born with a purpose. Knowing that he was a unique person. Knowing that though he had been rejected, he had been sidelined and maligned, but he knew that there was an assignment. He knew that he was a game changer. He knew that he was born to make a difference. He knew that he was born not to be an entity. He was born not to be a worthless person. He was born as a, an, an image of God to be an, an empowered person. David knew. Who may be looking down on you who are young some of us they've told us <laughs> uh, they told us yeah, look at your body i remember recently i was going for an interview to go somewhere and the people i was supposed to join they are about 35 the ages the age the minimum age is that 35 and <laughs> that one is like nine ten years difference then i went there said small boy what are you coming to do here i said you are disqualified <laughs> i was saying it in my head my case is different Tell your neighbor, my case is different. You don't, you don't know. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. You are a game changer. You are a game changer. Let nobody undermine you. Hallelujah. David gets there. They, they shut him down. They despise him and all. But he, he did not give any, any, any acceptance to what they were saying. He did not listen to that. And he went on. That is why I'm using David as my character study to share with you. You know, in our, our history, we have men like Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, our forefather, who, who was the first president of Ghana. He went through a lot 
to fight for the justice of Ghana, to fight for the freedom of Ghana. These men were men who lived their lives to impact the nation. Men like Nelson Mandela, my, my surname, Nelson. He lived his life to touch lives. Abraham Lincoln, all the people we read about, that sometimes you read and you think like, oh, these people were so privileged. No, they were game changers. When we come to the Bible, we have men like Joseph and all. Joseph, Japhta and all. But to this afternoon, I'm sharing with you David. So what are some of the things that David did that made him a game changer? Hallelujah. I'm giving you about four keys. If you want to be a game changer. First of all, for you to be a game changer, you must know your identity. Tell your sister, you must know your identity. You must know your identity. I would have gone through the scripture with you, but because of the time. So you can read from verse 12 to verse, uh, verse 40. You can get everything I'm talking about today. Hallelujah. David knew his identity. When David got to the battlefield, everybody saw him as a youth. They saw him as a mere shepherd boy. They saw him as a boy who was a bastard. Because when we read the scripture, David's mother's name was never mentioned. And the fact that he was the youngest and was taken into the bush tells you that David had a lot of challenges. And David's story is not different from our stories. We may be wearing suits here, we may be standing here, but you never know the challenges. But we know we are game changers. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, the challenges are there. The difficulties are there. The obstacles are there. But I know I am a game changer. Hallelujah. David got there, they were looking at him that you are you a small boy, you don't deserve. You cannot, you have not even been to a battle before. You have not fought any battle before. What gives you confidence? They were seeing him as a mere youth. They saw him as someone who was inexperienced. They saw him as someone who was just bragging. But destiny was calling David. They knew, David knew his identity. When we talk about identity, we are talking about who you are. Ask your neighbor, who are you? Who are you? Ask your neighbor, who are you? We are talking about who you are. Who's, who's you are? When I, I'm talking about who you are, who do you belong to? Do you belong to the God or the devil? Ask your neighbor. Maybe you are here. Ask your neighbor. Say neighbor. Maybe you are here, but maybe you are the agent. You are an agent. Say neighbor. Say neighbor. Please, are you an agent of the devil? I know, I know. I know that you belong to God. Say neighbor, neighbor. I know you belong to God. That is why you are a game changer. My brothers, my sisters, you see, we are not too young to become game changers. When you go to US and co, Ghana here, Africa here, we will be 20, 25, 30, and they will still tell us that we are small boys, we should keep quiet. I remember once I was watching a story, they were having a speech, and Africa, big men attended, and the speaker was a small boy. When you check the age, I don't think he will be up to 30. But our president here, our ministers, around 50, 60, they went to listen. The same thing will be going on in our country. They will tell us we are small boys. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, you may be small in your, in your size, but you are not small for God to use you as a game changer. Tell your brother, say brother, you may be small. If it may be your, the course you are reading, you are not seeing top, but I came to tell you, you are a game changer. Who are you? We have identity crisis in our time. I'm so sad when I see the young ladies on TikTok showing their bomb bombs. Look, 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 look at the brothers. They will not concentrate. Too. I am so sad when I see, pardon me, maybe they are your fans. I see when your life is meaningless. You may be here. You see, I'm talking to you as one of you. I have gone to, through you before. I, my school, I applied. I wanted to go to Augustine or at this school. Everything, they rejected me. But I mean, I am not rejectable. If you reject me, I will, I will, I will put myself there. They rejected me. Oh. I just wanted to go there. You know, how they dress, how they are so neat. I just wanted, wanted to go there without asking the mind of God, what God had for me. So I just wanted to go. When they come at this school, everybody, whether you are getting F in chains, or that you know that we too, we are this school. If they are getting F9, we are this school. If they are getting this, we are this school. Oh, that was my, my aim. I wanted to just go there. My school, I wanted to, the only person, go to a disco so that when I come and I meet my friends, 
you are going to the side too. I'm going to the, the proper school. But thank God. Say thank God. I qualify, but they rejected me. I pray for you. When you are when you are missing your identity, when you are missing your way, may God, may God orchestrate something that will drive you back. Hallelujah. So David knew who he was. When he got there and they were shutting him down, that keep quiet. You don't have anything to offer. David was not seeing himself as just a shepherd boy. He asked a particular question and that one tells us who David was. He said, is there not a cause? Ask your neighbor, is there not a cause? Ask your neighbor again, is there not a cause? For you to be a game changer, you must know who you are. You must know who you are. Who you are. You must identify who you are. Who you are, that is God. That is why if you don't have God, everything you are doing doesn't count. Because until you discover God, you cannot discover yourself. You must discover God. When you discover God, you discover yourself. Then you discover what God has made you to be, your purpose. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, I am a game changer. I am a game changer. The Bible says that, he said, we are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. We are a chosen generation. And we must know that that is what God has made us to be. According to Matthew chapter 5 verse 16, he said, ye are the light of the world. We are the light. Until you know this thing, you live your life anyhow. Until you know that you are born to make a difference, to impact your generation, and to be a generational blessing. You just be going about aimlessly. But if you know who you are, that is when you are going to be a game changer. Say, I will be a game changer. Because I know who I am. Hallelujah. The second thing, David, we can get from David, that why, what made him a game changer is that David was a generational thinker. Say, generational thinker. You see, when he got there, the army were there. All the other people were there, even including the king and all the people. But they were so, they were playing safe. Because... They were afraid. The whole nation was afraid of one man. They were thinking about themselves. But David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine who wants to defy the army of God? David was thinking about the, the army of God, the people of God. He was not thinking. David was taking a risk. What David was doing, it was a risk he was taking because he had never been on the battlefield before. All the people, they were seeing Goliath as a, a giant. But David was seeing him as a dog. Hallelujah. If you want to be a game changer, your thinking, how you perceive things, your mindset, the way you see things to be will, will, will impact your life. David, everybody was seeing the man as a giant, as someone nobody can conquer as a champion. But David got there and he said, this guy, everybody is perceiving him to be a giant, but I don't see him to be a giant. Everybody is seeing him as to be a killer, but I don't see him as, an, as a killer. Everybody is saying that we are in this economy, that everything is going down, but we are seeing differently. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, I am a generational thinker. If you want to be a game changer, you must be a generational thinker. And that one also implies that you must think outside the box. Tell your neighbors, think outside the box. Everybody was there concentrating. How, how can I tackle this man? How can I tackle this man? But when David got there, he was seeing it differently. That one stone is able to kill this giant. One stone. That is the perception you must have. How you see things, you can write it down. Your mindset will determine your decisions. Write it down. It will not only determine the decisions you take. It will also determine the discussions you have. How you say things. If you have wrong mindset, if your thinking pattern is wrong, you are going to say negative things. You are going to perceive negative things. And your mindset will determine your destination. Hallelujah. Write it very quickly so that we can think our time is... Yes. In Numbers chapter, I think, 33, 13, 33 or so, we talk up, we hear about Joshua and Caleb. That the Bible says that God spoke to Moses that he should send some men to go and spy the land. He sent 12 men. When they went, they saw everything. When they came, 10 of them gave a very negative report. But two of them, Joshua and Caleb, they said that, yes, we saw the giant. 
We also saw that the land is flowing with milk and honey. But we are not focusing on the giants. We are ready. Tell your neighbor we are ready. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. The obstacles may be there. The challenges may be there. The difficulties may be there. But we are ready to begin changes. We are ready to make a difference. We are ready to make a, a divine turn around. And I came to announce unto someone. You may be a young boy here. You may be a young girl here. You may have been rejected. You, are my, you may have been put at the other side. But I came to declare. I see by the grace of God you are rising from obscurity you are entering into your place of prominence do I have people here at all I prophesy over your life we are the next generation who are going to change the world we are this generation who are going to move the nation we are movers and shakers we are going to win we are going to turn things around I prophesy you are a game changer because you have the right mindset you are a game changer because you think right when people are seeing difficulties you are going to see the positive side of it you are an eagle you are an eagle you are an eagle the eagle sees turbulence and he changes it to his advantage i pray for you you saw like an eagle you saw like the eagle i prophesy you are soaring in your academics you are soaring in your purpose in your assignment you will become a game changer somebody shout i am a game changer let me run up. David was not only a game changer, uh, was not only a game changer because of generation, being a generational thinker, but also David was determined to do the uncommon. Tell your neighbor, if you want to be a game changer, you must be determined to do the uncommon. David was determined to do the uncommon. When everybody was running away, he was putting his life on the radar that if I die, I want to die. If you want to be a game changer, you must be determined to do the uncommon. Everybody is doing the same thing. But if you want to be a game changer, you must take a different step. You must dare to be different. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. If you want to be a game changer, you must dare to be different. Say neighbor. You are a unique person. You are made for an extraordinary accomplishment. And you cannot do the same thing. Everybody is doing. You are a game changer. You must be determined. According to Mark, I think chapter 2 going. The Bible says that once upon a time, Jesus went to Capernaum. He was preaching. And the Bible says that the place was full. But there were, the place was full that even the gate was locked. There was no room. But the Bible says that there were four people who came with their friend who was a leper. Who was sick of palsy. And the Bible says that they saw, they wanted to get to Jesus. But when they got there, the place was locked. They said, oh, no, we don't go back. We will create a space for ourselves. The Bible says that they climbed the roof and they dug a hole and they put the neighbor there. You are lazy. So you study small, you don't get it. I'm giving up. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, if you want to be a game changer, you must do the radical. You must do the uncommon. You must go the extra man. Hallelujah. As I bring my message into a conclusion, David was not only a game changer because he was... He, he knew his identity and also a generational thinker and determined. But David was a game changer because he knew God. Say, because he knew God. Because he knew God. The same, when you check the same test. When David wanted to battle Goliath, the brothers, first of all, they shut him down. He didn't give up. Then the king called him and he said, Ah, you this small boy. You langa langa boy, you don't, you don't have anything. And the king was trying to interview David to know where his confidence lies. He said, what gives you audacity? He said, king, can I tell you something? When I was in the bush, when my parents rejected me, when my family thought I was nobody, I was keeping the flock. And one day, a lamb and a lion came for one of them. He said, came to pick one. And he said, the same God helped me to kill both of them and I delivered the lamb. He said the same God who was with me who made me kill the bear and the lion the same God will deliver Goliath into my hands. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, do you know God? Do you know God? David's confidence of being a game changer was not on himself or himself because of God. That is why I came to tell you 
as I wrap up that you, you are born to be a game changer. You are not like any other man. The other day, Samson said, I am a Nazarite. Razor has never touched my hair. And the day that razor touches my hair, I will become like every other man. But I came to declare to you that you are not any other person. You are not like any other, even not your parents. You cannot be, God has put something unique on the inside of you. God, God has created you in his own image for such a time like this. Oh, it looks like I'm talking about only the guys. But when I read the Bible, I saw women like Deborah who rose up when all the men went into hiding. I saw women like Esther who said, if I perish, let me perish. I saw women like Ruth, Naomi, who made a difference in their time. That is why I came to prophesy. I came to declare unto the young ladies here, you may be seen as a sex toy because of what your neighbors are doing, because of what when they say, and the colleagues are doing, but I came to prophesy. You are not like those who are fooling. You are not like those who are removing their brazier and things. You are made for a purpose. You are going to fulfill your purpose. You are as a game changer. You are a game changer. You are a game changer. You are a game changer. And I prophesy. I see the grace of God coming over you. You will excel in your academics. You will excel in your, in the, in your destiny. You will excel whatever you do may God may the grace of God locate you you cannot be a game changer until you know God the other time when I was at Accra girls when we went there I started my message don't quit on your pursuit by letting them know that anything we do outside God is meaningless purposeless and useless if you are you want to become a game changer you may know your identity that one is not possible until you know God. You may be a generational thinker. You may be determined. But without that one factor, the equation is not balanced. Can we humbly be on our feet in the space of one, two minutes? Jesus. No, 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 no. Yes, yes, yes. Our time, for the sake of time, if you are here, maybe you know all the other time you didn't know that you cannot be a game changer you cannot get the eight a's you are looking for even you may get it but without god it does not make any meaning we want to close our eyes if you are here today is the day jesus is calling on to you we came here with a purpose we came here with a particular agenda that you will become a game changer that you will discover your purpose unleash your god-given potentials and make impact in your generation but until god until you know that god we are talking about everything is useless please if you are here as we all close our eyes you can let the ushers, ushers sorry ushers help them come forward as we make this decision together you don't know jesus i am a brother like you i am like your brother whether you're a lady or a guy i am your brother and so you don't have to feel any intimidated you don't have to feel shame just come around let's make this decision and give our life unto christ sing the song Say. This, if you are here, come for it. I when when before I went to the SHS, I used to go to church. My parents have been Christians. I used to go. My sister is here, but it was SHS. 
that I've got to know Jesus for myself. You may be here, maybe you're a church goer. But today, we are talking about an experience with God, with Jesus. That David had with God and he was able to make a difference. If you are here, you may be attending church, but you don't know. Please come. We have only two minutes to go. Please come. Please, I'm appealing to you. The sisters, don't feel shy. Please, you can come. Come. We are making that decision. If you are coming, come. My brothers, my sisters, please kindly lift up your hands. And we are all praying together. It is by the mercies of God. And we are praying. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for today that you have given me the privilege of your son Jesus that I may also have an encounter with you. Lord Jesus, this afternoon, I make this bold decision and I declare that I give my life unto you. Lord, accept me and make me one of your own. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Please, I want you to follow the brother. Please take your take their details then. Please lift up your hands. Please, you can, you can follow. We are done. I'm praying with you. Lift up your hands. We are praying. Kadamalahasis. Kadimiliasis. Stele grossos. I pray for you this afternoon and I declare over your life that as we have come for campus pop-up, after today, may the Lord make you a game changer. May you be the one who will bring solution to your family. May you be that man and that woman who will cause a change in our generation. I prophesy, may the Lord change you from an entity to be a game changer. I pray that today you are rising from obscurity to your place of prominence. May the Lord shift you to the place of impact. I pray that you will be a winner and not a loser. You are a victor. You are a victor. I prophesy that you excel. I pray whatever addiction you may have, may that addiction break. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, any demonic plot concerning your life, let it be broken. Let the power of the Holy Ghost consume you. I pray that the Lord will revive you. May the Lord order your steps. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because of our time, we have to end it here. Please kindly take your take your seat. You want to Let's put our hands together for the man of God, for the servant of God. Christek, let's celebrate a vessel of God. Thank you all so much for staying with us. Thank you so much for staying. In 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7, we learn something important. 2 Corinthians 4 7. He says that but there's a treasure in earthen vessels. There is a So there's a treasure in you and the excellency will be by the power of God and it will not be of you. Amen. Thank you so much. Now there's a treasure being deposited in you. You have received something. From here, you are living to shine. Amen. You leave this assembly hall and you are going to pop out out there. Our brothers from Presec will lead us to take a very short offering. Then from there, we'll have a breakout session for about 10 minutes and our leaders will speak to you very briefly. So please don't be in a rush to leave when we close. The Presec band will lead us to take the offering. We'll come from the back. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Offering time. Offering time.
Puma, da da, Puma, da da, me di Yesu baya me Puma, da da, me di Yesu baya me Puma, a da da, Puma, Puma, da da, Puma. Me di Yesu, me di Yesu, baya me puma. Oh, da da, me di Yesu, baya, me di Yesu, baya me puma. Ah da da, we will celebrate our God. We will celebrate our God. Let us find our beauty, that is glory to see. We will celebrate our Lord. Let us find our beauty, that is glory to see. We will celebrate our Lord. We will celebrate, we will celebrate our Lord. Oh, oh. We will celebrate, we will celebrate. Let it burn not be raised. We will celebrate our Lord. Let it burn not be raised. That is for me. We will celebrate our Lord. Now, Mr. Pomsheno, 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 Christo, Pomsheno. Mais c'est pas mon chien, non pas mon chien, non pas mon chien, non qui se trouve. Oh et ça non ouais. Oh et ça non ouais. Et ça non ouais. Oh et ça non ouais. I say who has the final say? Jehovah the final say. I say who has the final say, Jehovah, the final say. Oh, I say, who has the final say, Jehovah, the final say. Oh, I say, who has the final say, Jehovah, the final say. Oh, Jehovah, turns my life around. He turns my life around. He makes a way when there is no way. Jehovah. Two for seven, I will praise you, Jehovah. Two for seven, I will praise you, my Lord. Two for seven, I will praise you, Jehovah. Two for seven, I will praise you, my Lord. Two for seven. Two for seven. I will praise you, my Lord. I praise you, my Lord. Two for seven. Two for seven. I will praise you, Jehovah. I will praise you, Jehovah. Two for seven. Oh, two for seven. Amen. Shall we close our eyes for a prayer? Father, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for these blessings. We pray that they will be sanctified and edified for the purpose for which we use them. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so very quickly, we want to break into groups. So the four columns, just turn your chairs around. The leaders will come to you, and they'll lead you in very wonderful breakout sessions. You can ask them questions concerning tertiary and any other thing else that you want clarity on. So, from the front in, in force, let's all turn our chest around, form very nice circles, and let's have the breakout chest in quickly. Ten minutes, and we are out of here. Um, I would employ the leaders to kindly come up and help them to help, the, to help them arrange themselves. So, let's, let's do that quickly and leave. It looks like I'm talking about only the guys. But when I read the Bible, I saw women like Deborah who rose up when all the men went into hiding. I saw women like Esther who said... If
Can we have the leaders join them quickly?